Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always, told out of voice of radio. So today, we need to take a little bit of a look at a very exciting trademark which has gone and been filed by the Pokemon Company or Nintendo Creatures and Game Freak over in Japan. And I've talked to this a few times at this stage, and I think it does bear repeating. When these trademarks get filed, and there's a lovely Primal Luger over at Poker Guardian who we work with on this, tend to be pretty gosh darn good. So, VMAX Climax was a trademark we looked at before, which just so happens to have been a real set. More on that one in a moment. Uh, Starbirth was a trademark which then ended up being a real set. Battle Region was one that we saw. I could keep going. You get the point at this stage. The point is, when I'm looking at these trademarks, the hit rate we've got here is pretty gosh darn good. Generally speaking, if we're sharing these trademarks with you, saying, hey, they are probably going to be new Pokemon TCG sets, they are probably going to be new Pokemon TCG sets. So, no, it's not confirmed. No, it's not official. No, I am not absolutely 100% guaranteeing that this is a new Pokemon TCG set. But I am telling you that the trademark has been filed about the way we would expect. It looks like a new TCG set. And as I've just said, our hit rate here is pretty gosh darn good. So with that born in mind, what do we have? We have V-Star Universe. And I don't think it takes someone who is a huge, phenomenal, gigantic fan of the Pokemon TCG to equate that to VMAX Climax. This sounds very, very much like VMAX Climax. Anybody's wondering, VMAX Climax was trademarked in January 2021 and came out in December 2021. Here, obviously, we got a trademark coming in April 2022. I would still expect this to be a December 2022 set. Because this sounds like the end. You know, VMAX Climax was the climax of the VMAX era. And I'm still annoyed because for ages it was the climax of the VMAX era. And then they introduced new VMAXs like Machamp in the later set, which makes no real sense. So I don't know. It was the climax of VMAXs and, and then it wasn't for some reason. I don't really get it. But V-Star Universe sounds like a set to celebrate the end of V-Star. And actually, that does make perfect sense because we know what's going to happen to some degree. We know what's going to happen to the Pokemon TCG this year. You see, we are currently, you know, in Japan, they are gearing up on Friday for the release of Space Juggler and Time Gazer. Those are the two Sword and Shield 10 sets. That is a double set. And we've got a few more sets to come which will end around about Sword and Shield 12-ish. And then when we get to the end of the year, we will be expecting the release of the first Pokemon Scarlet, Pokemon Violet set. We talked about this a little bit before, but, you know, we could look at, for instance, the Sword and Shield base set, and that was released in Japan in December 2019. And we could look at the Sun and Moon base set, and that was released in Japan on December 2016. So December 2022 is a very, very safe bet for the release of this new Scarlet and Violet set, the new block of the TCG. And actually, that makes it quite unlikely that V-Star Universe will be December. So maybe it'll be January, maybe it'll be November. It'll be there or thereabouts. My point is... We know that we are gearing up to the end of the Sword and Shield TCG. We know that by the end of the year in Japan, we are going to see the beginning of Scarlet and Violet. And we know that our February set in 2023, that is 10 months from now, is going to bring us in Scarlet and Violet in English. We don't know, know this because it's not actually been announced. But looking at everything Pokemon have done for years, this is the way it's going to work. And it's likely that V-Star will be disappearing. Now, it's not guaranteed that V-Star will be disappearing. Because remember, EXs came around in Next Destinies with Pokemon like Mewtwo, for instance. And that was very much a Gen 5 set, a Gen 5 gimmick. But then we saw that they stayed around into Gen 6. So in the X and Y base set, we got some like Evil Tal. And I'm showing the celebration scans here just because it's kind of fun that those cards came back around in celebrations. 
that was kind of fun. So it's no guarantee that V's and V-Star and all of that are going away. But I think what's important is EXs didn't start with Gen 5. I mean, they did, but they didn't start at the start of Gen 5. We had those couple of sets which didn't really have very much in the way of special things. We had full arts like Reshiram and Zekrom, which, which were also in the special set in that celebrations. And then we got into EXs properly, and then they lasted through Gen 6. But Gen 7 gave us GXs. Think things like Tapu Lele. And they stayed only for Gen 7 and then went away. And then Gen 8 has given us Vs. And we've seen V Maxes and V Stars and V Union. But really, Pokemon V are very much the Gen 8 thing. And I would expect them to go away. No guarantee, like I've said. But I would expect them to go away. So if we're expecting Vs, including V Stars, to go away at the end of this year... And we've got a set coming which is called V-Star Universe. That's too perfect. That is absolutely too perfect. So I would expect it to come at the end of this year, beginning of next year. And I would expect it to be close to the release of Scarlet and Violet. And I would expect it to be, you know, the real sunset of Generation 8 in the TCG. And the fact of the matter is, we have got a lot of very exciting things to look forward to. So, the last time this happened, the last set exactly like this, and again, we don't actually know what it is. This is very much me making predictions, but it all makes a lot of sense. But like I say, this isn't guaranteed. This is me making what I think are sensible predictions based on what we've seen in the past. Please do bear that in mind. So, Tag All Stars. Tag All Stars was Sun and Moon 12A. It was the very, very last Sun and Moon set over in Japan. Now, that actually released on October the 4th, 2019. And remember that that then led into Sword and Shield, which came out in December. So, we actually had a couple months gap. So, maybe V-Star Universe could come as early as October of this year. That could happen. But the thing about Tag All Stars is what we saw was a set that reprinted a whole bunch of super exciting cards. It reprinted loads of the Prism Star Pokemon, as an example. It reprinted loads of the tag teams. And remember, GXs were the Gen 7 gimmick. In the final year of Sun and Moon, they brought in tag teams as kind of like a subset of GXs. And then we had Tag All-Stars. That matches exactly having V as the gimmick for Generation 8. Bringing in V-Star for the final year. And then having V-Star Universe as an equivalent of Tag All-Stars. It all just makes way too much sense. But then they brought in a whole bunch of extra fancy stuff. Some of which we still don't actually have which is genuinely a little upsetting. There are still a bunch of cards and tag all-stars that we're missing. So we could look at things like, I mean, for me personally, it's the full art of clay. I'm a big fan of clay. Clay's great. Yeah, st still don't have that card, ladies and gentlemen. Still don't have it. There are a bunch of gold tag teams, like Mewtwo and Mew, as an example, that we still don't actually have an English version of. Uh, the rainbow rare of Cleffa and all his baby friends. Yeah. So there were just a whole bunch of, you know, rainbow rares and gold cards and full art supporters. Belalba and Bryson, man. That was a cool one that we don't have right now, which is kind of upsetting. And then we had all kinds of alternate arts, like the Dark Ryan Umbreon, which we did later get as a promo card. Things like the Trevenant and Dustwire, you know, these really cool cards, alternate arts mostly of existing cards, all came around. And that was a super exciting set. And that's the kind of thing I'm expecting here. I would be expecting a whole bunch of reprints of very cool, relevant cards... And then I would be expecting a whole bunch of secret rares, which are very, very exciting. And these were bigger packs. You know, you'd get 11 cards in a pack rather than five, but you'd get a guaranteed GX, two hollows. It was a really cool set. 
And it's very, very similar. If you want a more recent example, it's kind of similar to VMAX Climax, which, like I say, was supposed to be the end of the VMAX era, the end of year two. Now, this wasn't the end of a block, but it was the end of year two, the end of VMAXs before V Stars came in. And again, I know that's weirdly proven not to be strictly true, but that seems to be what the set was going for. And once again, if we take a look at VMAX Climax, we had a whole bunch of reprinted VMAXs and things of that nature. Lots of cool cards. But then we brought in all of those wonderful character rares and character super rares. But then we also had a whole bunch of extra stuff for our supporters. We had some of those gold cards. Really interesting stuff. Really cool stuff. So what I'm saying is, that is, and again, we don't know for a fact, we cannot know for a fact, but what I'm saying is very likely is that this is what's happening here. What I would imagine is that this is going to be a set which essentially sunsets the Generation 8, the Sword and Shield era, reprints a whole bunch of really good playable cards, but brings in some other really cool stuff to go along with it exactly what that is we will have to wait and see unfortunately which is a little bit sad but that would be my prediction for what this is that seems to be the pattern we've got here that seems to be where we're going because honestly it just makes too much sense We've seen Pokemon do this. When they get to the end of a block, they like to do a celebration set. We're not going to get into a huge amount of detail about it, but the best of X and Y is another set that we could talk about, which is a very similar kind of set. They like to do these end of block sets. The end of block sets team to be lots of reprint of really good cards, but then a whole bunch of fancy alternate arts, super rares, call them what you will, to kind of go along with them. And this just makes way too much sense. Not guaranteeing this is what's happening. But I am saying that, frankly, this is absolutely what I am expecting. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. There's a new set coming. We don't know exactly what it is. But I think it's fair to say that what we talked about here, it being an ender block spe special set, lots of reprints, loads of super rares, etc. Seems to make a lot of sense to me, ladies and gentlemen. Seems to make an awful lot of sense to me. But I want to know what you think about this, and I want to know your predictions, so let me know in the comment section. Go nuts! Be nice! And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.